Hey guys, this is a part of the DVD, a little extra I decided to throw in, uh, talking about the origins of the characters there on the site, that guy with the glasses.com. So, here we go. Nostalgia Craig's very much based on um, that time I was going through. I think everybody goes through it when they become really obsessed with what they grew up with. Just the whole nostalgia factor. And I started to go through it maybe uh, mid-college, perhaps. And I became obsessed with finding everything that I grew up with, like everything I saw when I was a kid. And watching it, I sort of realized that a lot of the stuff wasn't as good as I remember it. In fact, it's usually very bad. So... Something I found out, I found out a lot of people really liked talking about that. They liked reminiscing and remembering what they grew up with, and now there's a huge market for it, even. You go, there's a ton of t-shirts uh, advertising that, you know, just things from the nostalgic age and stuff like that. So, at the time, I wanted to see if I was still funny, like actually me, you know, and not my five-second movies and my editing. I wanted to see if I was actually funny. So I came up with this character that was betrayed by his childhood. He actually felt really pissed off that his childhood wasn't as good as he remembered it. And gets really angry at it and annoyed and obviously he's the character you see. And people really got attached to it and they liked his outbursts and stuff like that, so uh, that's about it. My number one influence is, it's gonna sound weird, but it's actually Daffy Duck which is probably my number one influence for anything. He's like my favorite comedian, even though he's not real. But that's pretty much where I get a lot of my material from. And I think there's a lot of him in Nostalgia Critic. There's a lot of other people. There's a lot of Louis Black, Stephen Colbert, the little Bill Murray and stuff. Just pretty much everybody I liked growing up is in that character. And there is a little bit of me in there also, particularly when I do the serious stuff, like some of the top 11 lists. But that's mainly uh, who is centered around. The idea behind the costume was that it'd be someone who wanted to start looking professional but then sort of got lazy halfway through and gave up. So I, I always like the idea of wearing a suit coat and, you know, a tie, but I don't like wearing nice shirts and I like wearing hats, so I just sort of threw that all together. It's about basic as it gets. The bum is centered off of a really dumb voice I did in the Cloverfield review where I was imitating the movie, and I just really loved doing that voice. I wanted to find a character to somehow keep doing that voice, and I didn't know what the character was or what he'd do, but I didn't care. I just wanted to keep doing that voice because it was so easy and it was so much fun to do. So the only thing I could think of is who would talk like that is some sort of insane bum. So, pretty much, I was trying to think, how do I make this a continuing series? I know Nostalgia Craig only did older films and shows, so why don't I have a character that does current ones? Probably the biggest influence, without me even knowing it, is uh, Bill Murray from Caddyshack. That's pretty much that voice. In terms of the character, I, I like characters that are really into their own world, are very confident of their own world but are very happy there as well. I think characters like um, like the cat from Red Dwarf or Ed from Cowboy Bebop, a lot of sci-fi comedy is more I think about it. But yeah, I think those kind of characters I really enjoy watching and so I also enjoy playing. So I, I think that's about it for the influences. The costume sort of came from me just looking through my closet, seeing what I could find, and that's very much what I found, an old bear's hat. Uh, a trench coat that actually used to be my grandfather's. The, I think the blue jacket under it is also his. And the wig I think I found in a, uh, with some of my Halloween stuff. And yeah, pretty much just everything hastily thrown together. As that guy came from Mike Mashad, he's the guy who runs Channel Awesome, pretty much the guy in charge. He runs the website as well. And when we were really getting started, he gave me a call and pretty much just said, Eska Ninja is really popular, do something like that, click. That was about it. That's a very abbreviated version, but essentially that's about it. So I was trying to think, well, okay, ask that guy with the glasses, well, what would that be? And I like the idea of making it interactive and having people submit their questions, but I didn't know what the joke would be in answering them. So for some reason, the first thing that came to my mind is this very sort of sophisticated looking person with a pipe, he has a 
a robe, some sort of red ascot or something like that, and the joke would always be that he would get everything wrong. Not just wrong, phenomenally wrong. Like, unbelievably wrong. And from that spawned sort of this horrible, hate-filled, racist, psychotic, self-centered, sexist, bigoted, just pure ball of hate that's dressed up to look very sophisticated so you would believe him. I'm sure there's someone I can't really think, though. Perhaps, uh, maybe John Cleese? Somewhere there's some sort of sophisticated British person talking really silly and really stupid but sounding very sophisticated so that you don't notice. That's about it I can think of. The robe is actually Vargo's, and I've yet to give it back. <laughs> I've pretty much held on to it this whole time. I actually sort of feel bad now, but yeah, I... I don't think he's ever going to get back either. After we're done filming, he'll probably auction it off and he'll never see it again, so... The red ascot, I... I think I took an old red shirt and just cut it up. It's not even a real scarf or whatever. The pipe I just got at store is about as basic as you can get. Again. Dominic is very interesting because that's the first character I've done where he's not the center of attention. He's not the joke. He, he's the straight guy, and what he's talking about is the funny part. So I was trying to think of someone that was very laid back, just very easygoing, but certainly looks like he's heard his uh, his, his bunch of stories there. So yeah, that's that's about it. Sort of a there's nothing much funny about him, so <laughs> can't talk too much about him. I forget his name, but it's that guy from Snatch and and the the transporter, or teleporter, or whatever. That British guy, I. I'm too lazy to look up his name, but you know who I'm talking about. Everyone says I sound like him. So, it's it's that guy. It's nobody else. It's pretty much just a direct rip of that guy, except me doing a very poor version of him. So, that's about it. I actually went through a few different designs on the look of him. It was pretty much, I, I think I tried one with spiky hair, one with a hat, one with... I knew I was going to have the shirt, bow tie, and vest, but I didn't know what the hair should look like. Finally, the slick back seemed to look the most... I guess professional. I think it shows off my bald spots even more, but uh, but yeah, I think it seems to work. It certainly makes him look older, which is probably the idea of the character anyway, so that's about it. That never happened.